Gnome 43, I was actually waiting for this moment. I, I really wanted to try this out and I wanted to do it yesterday, but I <laughs> I actually recorded an episode just before it was released. So now I'm finally trying it and I will just try out all the new features, talk about them so that you know them. And then after that, I'm also going to give you some personal thought about GNOME 43, GNOME as a whole and the direction where GNOME is heading. So I'm trying it in uh, GNOME boxes, which is here. And this is the welcome um, screen. And by the way, I always really, really appreciate when somebody puts the Dvorak things in the very beginning of setting up your computer, because otherwise I have to like insert the username and stuff, you know, with a wrong layout, that, that's not a pleasure. So I'm also going to quickly see the tour because I've never talked about it. It's not strictly a GNOME 43 um, feature. However, I, I think that it's interesting for people that don't usually use GNOME, that GNOME has uh, implemented a tool recently, which looks like this and quickly explains all of the important things, of course, just also want to work of uh, GNOME, which is something that Kitty currently doesn't have, but it should come eventually. So that is a uh, direction where both uh, GNOME and Kitty are heading to. And first feature of GNOME 33, which is rather important, is the new quick settings menu. Now, in a virtual machine, some of the icons are missing. However, we see some of them that are important. First of all, we now have a screenshot button, button directly inside quick settings to quickly take screenshots. And not just that, it also supports directly a video recording, which is very nice. And you also get a um, system tray element that tells you about the time elapsing. So both of these things I really like and it's now directly in these quick settings. You also can enable and disable Wi-Fi um, or airplane mode directly from here and also switch between power saver and balanced. And also dark mode and light mode. Let's actually go with dark mode because who, do, who wouldn't, who wouldn't go with dark mode? Before this update, in order to actually switch between light and dark mode, you had to open up settings and you also had to open up settings to change the sound output. Now, in this case, I only have one, again, just because I'm a virtual machine, otherwise I would have two. Uh, you would have an icon that pops up and actually allows you to choose which sound output. We can also see here, this is the layout, the UI that has been chosen when you select a web connection or a Wi-Fi in most people's case. It looks pretty interesting. It actually darkens everything else and makes this box really pop up. I think that the design has a whole of these quick settings uh, really nails it. It's really well done, really pretty. And I personally agree with the idea of having quick settings. It's something that Chrome OS kind of started and then Apple also got one and then Windows 11 got one. Now Gnome has it too. Kitty Plasma, uh, I, I actually personally would like KD Plasma to have it, but other developers are against it. And the majority of people, uh, as far as I'm concerned, are against it, so it's not coming. But I'm happy that GNOME has it. I think it fits uh, the GNOME intended users rather better compared to Plasma. Then we also have a variety of application that has been ported to uh, GTK 4. Uh, as an example, files. We also have a new version of files and we can see that it has been ported to GNOME 40, to sorry, GTK4 as an example by the fact that now it is uh, convergent, uh, we call it, and they call it something else, adaptive, adaptive, uh, such as an example, you, when you actually make the window very narrow, you lose the sidebar, which makes this very easy to use on devices such as a phone. So I am guessing that this is all in the direction of using this on devices such as the Pine phone. Since uh, there's also so many improvements on bringing the actual shell, the entirety of the shell, so whole of GNOME onto the Pine, mobile devices as a whole. You also have a reorganization of the menu, not just convergency. And in general, it should be like prettier and the document properties have new features, stuff like this. I actually never used Nautilus even before GTK3, so I'm sure if you use it daily, you will recognize the differences, but I mostly don't. I also know that if you go and make this a list, how do you do this? Like this, nice. 
L look at this. It has a animation when you start something. This is lovely. Look at this. Sorry, I just saw the animation. <laughs> it might be a new thing, might be an old thing, but wow. <laughs> we should have web. Let's try to up open up something in web and take a screenshot. One of the new things is actually that it should be easier to take screenshot. There is now a shortcut for it, but there's also in theory an element, a menu element for it. Take screenshot in the context menu. So that was easy. That has been improved. And another very new thing is that we now have a new option that is called install sorry site as a web application, which is very interesting. So let's not install like Google. Let's install as an example Reddit and see how it performs. Dot com. Okay, this is Reddit. Let's try to install it as if it was an application, just like that. I think Reddit is enough. Done. Let's close it. We get a notification that says the application. Reddit is ready and we should have it here within uh, together with all of the application. We open it and it performs nicely as you would expect it. D I mean, you can recognize that it's just a website, but it's still a nice feature to have and it integrates nicely in the applications. Again, this has many features, but on stuff like phones, this is particularly important because, well, if you don't have the whole Android ecosystem on your phone, if it is a Linux device without Waydroid as an example, it is particularly important to access websites as if uh, they were native apps. But in general, web apps are very much uh, popular these days. These are all of the application that has been ported to JTK4. Let's actually give a look to also maps and console. Where is console? Whoops, here. So now these are GTK4. And we also have a redesign of calendar. I had to sneak peek into the release notes because I've forgotten a couple of things. <laughs> I studied the new stuff before doing the video, but some of the things you forget. So what's new is the sidebar with the calendar and the upcoming events. And in general, I've found um, in the KD Plasma world, where of course I live personally, um, calendars to be a bit of the weak part of the environment. Now with calendar with a K at the beginning, that is beginning to change, but it's actually still a bit difficult for me to even install calendar, which is weird. Let's actually try out calendar and see how out of the box, how well it performs. I would actually like to add a new event, first of all, like this and see if it appears here out of the box very nicely. You can bring it up. And something that I would really like to see, but I think um, there's n you don't have the option, would be to actually add directly from this menu a new event, but you can't do that. Sooner or later, I will actually find an operating system that allows me to add events in the calendar widget. And the weak view of calendar, sorry. <laughs> The grid, the calendar grid, I can do this, uh, has also been revamped with some uh, better color scheme. Uh, I'm again, not exactly sure what it refers to as I've never used calendar daily, but if you do, you're recognizing right now what's changed. Last thing that I should highlight, but again, I cannot do to be me in FBM, is the device security settings. I think this is particularly interesting. Uh, it is a new page in the GNOME privacy settings and it's not really clear immediately to me what it's supposed to do. Like I, I can understand, but in practice, I don't understand it because I'm not that much of an expert, but they do explain it rather well. It can be used to detect a variety of hardware security issues like manufacturing, manufacturing errors and hardware misconfiguration and also pot potential security issues such as physical device tampering or certain degradation of security tests. I don't even know what security test does. I'm happy to know that there are security tests. I don't know what's that. So I think this is particularly important because I would guess that most people don't know about these things. So actually having a page that warns you if anything is wrong is really important. So I'm really happy to see this and I'll actually try to get it working on actual hardware to see how it performs live. This is the best that, uh, that I could do with my current KD Neon uh, setup. Now, surely this is not an update that's maybe as big as the previous GNOME updates with uh, such as things such as the um, touchpad gestures, which for me were 
absolutely super nice thing to have. I think it was not GNOME 40, if I remember correctly. But there are a variety of little things, such as the quick setting menu, that I'm particularly happy to see. And in general, my thought about GNOME and the future of GNOME is that they are going a uh, transformation that's very similar to what is happening inside of KDE as a whole right now. Because they have just seen the release, just, I mean, two years ago, but they have seen the release of uh, GTK4 recently. They are transitioning from GTK3 to GTK4. They have also recently done a transition from X11 to Wayland. And now most people actually use Wayland for GNOME. KDE Plasma is in very much of a similar situation. Uh, Qt6 has recently been released and now apps will be ported to Qt6 but in general they are, there are many applications that are being ported or recreated in Krigami after being uh, in Qt widgets normally. If you don't know the difference between these two things I've done a video about that just a couple of days ago and also KD Plasma is very much within the transition from X11 to Wayland with a lot of new features coming to Wayland. And both GNOME and KD Plasma are uh, addressing the same very issues of being able to work on phones. And we see that from in apps like files, which I don't have open obviously, a focus on convergence or adaptive. And that is seen on uh, GNOME by JTK4 applications and in KD Plasma with Kurigami applications. And there's also a lot of development in bringing GNOME Shell or Foch different projects on the mobile phones, but also there's a lot of development in KDE Plasma that very much reflects that. So I think that GNOME and KDE right now are facing extremely similar issues. And uh, because transitioning from a ver past version of a toolkit to a new one, having to rewrite everything, transitioning from X11 to Wayland, these kind of things having to address with a form factor that's completely different from what you're supposed to do <laughs> originally, like phones. These things are issues uh, that are very difficult to solve. And it's very interesting to compare how the two projects are handling it. From this point of view, I think that GNOME has be going through an approach that seemed to work better. Let me explain. They actually reached Wayland maturity first. I think we can agree on that. And on the phone side, I think that their phone shell has some very interesting features that are actually able to make people say when they see them, ah, I would really, really I would really like to use this, sorry. And as an example, their uh, just navigation based system is really nice and it's on par with something like Android or iOS that use it. Uh, Kitty Plasma Mobile doesn't quite have anything like that. And when it also comes to applications, uh, having Kurigami as the convergent um, toolkit to make application is something that I'm a very big fan of. But in GNOME, in order to have an application that's convergent, you just port it to JTK4 and adapt it, I guess. In KD Plasma, it's much more difficult. You basically have to rewrite in Kurigami. And if it wasn't in Kurigami before, it's a bit of a mess. Like Dolphin, as, a, as an example, I don't see Dolphin ever becoming really convergent and being able to use uh, be used on a phone differently from GNOME files because it's Qt widgets. And if you want something that works on a phone, we have to visit, visit uh, of, of Kurigami, basically. And currently the only um, application file manager that uh, is based on Kurigami is like index, which is from Maui, which is yes, inside of KDE, but not quite. There's only just one developer work. It's really complex. It's not working as well as what GNOME is doing with these releases, I think. Of course, in general, I'm still a big fan of KDE Plasma, but I'm also really, uh, I also fully realize of how well GNOME is doing things. I, I think that GNOME is really addressing these kind of issues very nicely. So nothing else, congrats. Actually, there is one more thing. Uh, if you manage to go through 15 minutes of me just talking about GNOME and KDE, well, and that is uh, thanks to all of the patrons. And uh, actually, lately with uh, me doing podcast every day, I have a podcast, by the way, you should check it out, Linux Daily, it's called, and videos every day. And I also moved somewhere else entirely, <laughs> I mean, a different country. And uh, that's a lot on me. And also, yeah, it's 
I'm doing this in my free time. That that's the point. So if you have any uh, way to do a donation, if you can, if you want, that's particularly appreciated in this time. But it's not like mandatory or anything. And regardless, we can see on Monday, uh, next Monday, with a new video on this channel and a new podcast. So see you next week.